You're about to get some real sarcastic answers. Nice. So, uh, when you first started mixing mayonnaise? <laughs> Hold up. What was the first? One more time. When you first started mixing mayonnaise for your sandwiches? Yeah. What was the first ingredient you put into mayonnaise that you was like, oh my God, Look, this man, makes my mayonnaise crazy. Let me tell you something. If y'all have got some mayonnaise, put a little bit of red wine vinegar in there and some honey and some black pepper, and that's gonna step your mayonnaise game up. Ain't nobody fuck with you just on that little bit. Those two ingredients, red wine vinegar and honey, goddammit, and black pepper. Hell yeah. So when, uh, it's tight. <laughs> <coughs> you got a mean sandwich game on it. Yeah. This shit's beast. Yeah, my sandwich game is crazy. Sometimes I'll come on the bus and you be in there making a sandwich. I'm like, damn, man, break me off like half of that shit. That shit's gone. And you'll be like, it's all the mayonnaise. You got all kinds of mayonnaise. What kind of mayonnaise do you got on the bus besides regular old mayonnaise? Man, I got Chipotle. I got um, some horseradish. You know, I got some jalapeno mayonnaise. But all of it's fucking store-bought, so it's crap. If I was making that shit from scratch, it'd be delicious. My sandwich game is gangster. <laughs> you know? So I've been trying to get him to eat some, man. But, you know, he's from Alabama, man. He eats peanut butter and mayonnaise and bananas and shit. That shit's delicious. On man. I don't Indian what the bread. Problem is. There's no problem. It's just, you know. All right. <laughs> All right. So before, like, like, before, before, before. Let me just state this. This is the most yellow wolf's talked to me this whole tour. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so. <laughs> So Keep bef that. before, yeah, right. Nah, I go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I set up all night and talk to this motherfucker all fucking night. Anyway, so before, so you were, so let's just let's just cut to the chase. You were a cook. I was a cook. Where? Before a cook, I was a crook. Where? Where was you oh, cooking? Nah, I was a cook. I was a cook at Jim and Nick's Barbecue. At a barbecue restaurant, I was a cook at um, a redneck bar, white trash, Beast. redneck bar in Beast. the middle of nowhere. Um, but before that, nothing, man. I always like like hustled. I worked at gas station. I was kind of hustled out of there and like did minor things, man. You know, I just just made enough to keep some money in my pocket and keep some more in my more in my pocket. And then, um, but as far as when when uh, when Yellow Wolf came along and, and uh, shit like that. I worked as a cook when I when I started taking the job seriously. I tried to do the food industry, and I and I was coming in and and my boys on like, in the Source magazine, and you could see me in the magazine, and like, I'm taking it to work, and they're like, "That's great. Can we get some bread over, please?" You know. So and then I'm then I, I would get off when he would come into Atlanta. I would get off and I would uh, change my clothes in the stall and I smell like straight grease, straight pig, straight pork and barbecue. I would spray myself in the stall. I go to the studio with him and he works on a night shift. So he's there at like four in the morning working all the way to the morning. So I just had to sit Man, there. Man, I used to go into the tree sign studio and smell like straight slab. <laughs> <laughs> straight you ribs. Know, we were coming to the studio. So it smelled like a straight goddamn twelve pack of slabs. So look, but I would sit there and he do his Killing thing it, all night, making everybody hungry. But I'm not. Well, I'm not even rapping, not doing nothing. Just letting them know that I'm here, like that I'm. Rich is going through before everybody knew he was even in the building. They'd be like, Yeah. <laughs> like, damn, that's just. But those were those were rough times, man. Like, um, you know, getting off that late working, man. You know, you got real things going on, but you're trying to show that you're still dedicated to the music. You know, so you're really you're really getting off your socks are wet, your pants are wet. You're doing interviews on the phone in your work clothes, and then you're going to hang out with him there on a whole different type of schedule. So you know, it was a different time for me, but it was a great time as well. It was the, it was the beginning of uh, me having some hope to get out of that place I was working at. I'm gonna ask him one more question, just like just. A lot of people are not familiar, I would assume, that like um, you fully had the ball rolling prior to even meeting me. You had won a battle in Atlanta on radio with the 770 record. 
and uh, when we first met, you were opening up at Lenny's Bar, and uh, when I come to see Rock, you know, I obviously was impressed with your with your music, and um, you put in a ton of work. So, outside of just what you've done with me, just let everybody know, like, as a solo artist and as a uh, as a man, just with a focus, what it takes outside of just having a cosign just to, to have someone come in and say, hey man, this is cool, or what it takes on top of having a cosign. Yeah, people too. ask me all the time, like, you know, like, put me on, put me on, they think it's easy, they think it's just as easy as saying, like, hey, this is cool, but after I say, hey man, Rich is someone to pay attention to, what do you have to do in order to make that all connect with people? I mean, before I met him, I was, uh, I was, I was uh, really hustling really hard trying to get in the, uh, in the game in Atlanta. You know, I was, I was performing at strip clubs where if you've ever performed at a strip club, nobody cares to see you perform. And then your, your people around you is like, yeah, we down here tonight and it's not a big deal. You wait till about three in the morning and you sit there for hours to do two songs where nobody cares and I would do that night after night after night I would go do open mic sh night shows and everywhere where everybody's doing trap music snap music and I'd get up and do something different and everybody's looking at me like this and there's no crowd reaction they don't say hey they don't put their hands up they don't do none of that what it takes is it takes drive it takes you to take some of your money save up your money and put it into yourself I took my money that I was working with, that uh, that actually that I had dealt with some people before and saved on my own, and put my face in my hometown. So everywhere you went in my hometown, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing my face. This was prior to Yellow Wolf. It was prior to everything. So you couldn't go in my hometown in a gas station. You couldn't go to a grocery store. You couldn't go to McDonald's without seeing my sticker on the McDonald's thing. But all that takes money. It takes money to buy stickers. It takes money to buy posters. It takes um it takes drive to deal with that. So I felt like the the time that I put in doing that is the reason why I I met him or met other or the reason why you'll meet other people in your life that'll bring you to that next step. You put in all that work then you end up deserving it. You put your mind into something, something good will come out of it no matter what. And it just so happens it was Yellow Wolf that helped me out, but you know, whatever can help the next man out. You never know what it is. But he was grinding, doing his own thing, but he had a lot larger movement going on with me in a different, in a, in a, um, in a different kind of uh, atmosphere than I was in. So, uh, you know, I just linked over and worked out how it was. But it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of determination. And it takes investing in yourself. Everything isn't a hustle. Everything isn't trying to make money. Sometimes you got to invest in yourself and really just deal with the, deal with the stuff that comes with it. It's hard work. It's not easy. Well, I say that to say this, you know, wrapping up what he's saying just to, you know, just to clarify everything, like, you know, I asked him that question because I, I know the truth about Rich, you know, like, everybody thinks that, like, you know, Rich came on as American and I might have dumped money into him and it wasn't like that at all. All I said was, dude, it's the truth and I honestly told him that I was in no position to sign him. I've never signed no artist. I ain't got no paperwork on on Ritz. That's the truth. Just homies good and man, whatever I can do to help you, I can. I can't throw no money into you. I can't do this. So he had to get his own shit going. And um in a similar in a similar, you know, world like me signing Shady and getting with Marshall, I still had to keep, keep, keep going. So don't ever think that a cosign is all you need to get to where you're going you still have to put in drive as if that cosign ever existed so Ritz yeah and don't get it twisted he owes me seven dollars because he ordered the Coors Light the other night <laughs> and walked out of the hotel like it was no big deal like he owned the hotel and they were like where's your boy at with the Coors Light and I said, well, this is kind of weird. He should be paying for my shit. Man, he's you got owe money me tonight. just for the simple fact that you took my van to the guy in the Juggalos. But J-Dot says it's his like van Like insurance now. alone. It's, it's not his Go van ahead. anymore. But <laughs> This is Ritz. Slamaric and shit. Oh, Slamaric and shit. Thank you.